Welcome back to the channel guys. Well, I've got myself on another little launch. Rather than the south of Spain, I'm now in the south of France. I'm a right jet setter this year, but I'm here to ride the all new Suzuki GSX-8S. And this is it. We spent the morning riding this bike, thrashing it around the fantastic mountains in southern Spain. We're on the route Napoleon. So if anyone knows this area, it's quite a famous sort of biking route, route Napoleon. We just stopped for a bit of lunch. A uh, nice bit of pizza. But I'm not here to talk to you about tasty French pizzas and noisy tractors. I'm here to talk about the all new GSX 8S. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of something warm and Chopsy, roll the intro. Beautiful sunshine. We are in Nice. Here are the bikes all lined up, ready to go. I'm on the blue one. <laughs> uh, we've had all the briefings, etc., etc. Should be a bloody good ride out today. We're doing, we're doing about 200 kilometres today. Route Napoleon, which I've never done, but it's quite a famous route apparently. It's going to be really twisty, but it's quite up in the mountains. And there's yesterday there was snow, so maybe another Suzuki launch when we've got bloody snow again but it's about i guess it's about seven or eight degrees at the moment it's meant to be up to sort of 14 a bit later but let's see let's jump on the bikes i'm really excited about getting on this and this is a bike i've been really looking forward to riding um you know this has got some big competitors out there in, in the market this is getting quite a congested market for these uh, you know naked middleweights so i'm really interested to see how the suzuki stacks up this video is not going to be about comparing this to other bikes. We're going to be doing a separate comparison with this and the Hornet, me and Greg, later. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about which is better, etc, etc. This is about this bike and later we will do the, uh, the comparison. But let's jump on and let's see how she rides. Now this bike is all new. All new for 2023. There's no carryover on this machine. So this has got that brand new 270 degree parallel twin motor. It shares the same chassis and engine as the V-Strom 800 DE. So it's that same platform. Um, so what, what is a bit different about this is the airbox is actually under the seat. So the airbox is at the back, which is actually a bit like the, the KTM 790 and 890, isn't it? That's a similar design with the airbox behind the engine. So it's like a horizontal airbox and inlet into the engine. So it's all horizontal. There's no sort of down, down draft. Um, throttle bodies, you know, like on a conventional engine. It's all horizontal. And what Suzuki say? We've got a, we've got all of the Japanese tech team over from Japan for the present the technical presentation last night. And what they say that does is it offers 21% more combustion efficiency over like a downdraft setup. So, you know, being a completely new bike, new frame, they've designed this from the ground up. The engine is a 776cc unit, as I say, 270 degree parallel twin. And what's quite interesting about it is it has two balancing shafts. And normally, like the MT-07 has a single balancing shaft. Well, this is two, because when you've got that, uh, that parallel twin setup, you've got the primary vibrations and you've got a secondary vibration. And they've got these two balancing shafts to counter both of those uh, vibrations. So you know, it makes the engine very smooth. And I would say it, it's smoother, I would say, than the Hornet. The Hornet also has two balancing shafts. So Honda have gone the same route with that, but I'd say it's slightly smoother than the Hornet. She makes 80 horsepower and I think it's 78 newton meters of torque. So, you know, decent power, not quite as much as the Hornet, but more, you know, 10 horsepower more than the MT-07. The feet position is comfortable, your leg position. You're set up nice and comfortably. The bars are swept back. 
you've got all your weight on your bottom but the seat is actually fairly wide and fairly well padded which is nice you know the tanks quite slim here so you can grip it I think it's an 810 millimeter seat and it's thin at the front you know so those vertically challenged folk can get their legs down okay it's a firm ride it's definitely a firm ride there's it's non-adjustable so there's no adjustment up front but you have preload adjustment on the rear but it feels Suzuki normally do a good job of setting up suspension very well and it feels like it has been set up pretty well bearing in mind you know I'm, I'm a 20 stone rider so you know this won't have been set up for someone of my weight but Suzuki's do seem to work very well you know with a variety of different size riders on and we'll see when we hit the real twisty stuff what this what this handles like but you know it changes direction pretty well but you can tell I think over the horn that there's a little bit more weight there as I say this is a good sort of 10 kilos heavier than the Hornet but it still feels pretty agile pretty playful you know I'm wondering whether it actually feels a little bit more grunty than the Hornet I think as you rev it it sort of runs out of puff a little bit at the top end but I fancy it may be a little bit more grunty in the mid-range I could say <laughs> I said I wasn't going to draw any comparisons with the Hornet but that's just sort of initial initial thoughts there we won't know for sure until we get them both out together look at the view look at that there's supposed to be some incredible views on this ride so I'm looking forward to taking those in oh the mountains there we're going up there into the mountains and what I do like about this is as I said at the beginning you know it feels like a bigger bike it feels like a 750 you know when, when you're riding the Hornet you think you have to remind yourself this is a 750 you know it's more sort of CB500 sized isn't it whereas this feels a little bit more I don't want to say grown up but it feels bigger you know this feels like I mean I think the C, the, the Hornet I'm not slagging the Hornet I think I think it's fantastic yeah I think the Hornet's fantastic and for seven grand you know it's, it's an amazing bit of kit but I think maybe this feels a little bit more grown up less of a, you know less of less of a my first big bike if you like you know I don't think it so far you know we've yet to hit the real twisty stuff I don't think it perhaps is quite as playful as the Hornet I think you can tell it's heavier you can tell it's a little bit a little less bit of a 10 horsepower down on the Hornet when I, I I feel like I could actually consider one of these so everyone's, everyone's buggered off look I mean it's like I don't want to ride like a complete tool cheers matey here we go let's in for some twisties <laughs> It's, I've had the back go a couple of times there's not masses of grip you know so you've got to bear that in mind <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah here we go now we're talking quick shifter blipper is standard on this so it's not it's not optional it is standard so this may be a thousand pound more expensive than the Hornet but you do get the quick shifter and blipper as stock, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh wow, this is gonna be an amazing day if the roads are gonna be like this all day. See, it does perhaps run out of puff a little bit at the top. compared to the Hornet I said I wasn't going to compare this to the Hornet but it's impossible it's impossible not to oh, look at the views to the right there look at that you've got three power modes you know the ABC but all with the same power but just different throttle responses you know exactly like the beast drum you know and the moment I've got it in the A I've got it in the most aggressive and there's a definite there's a definite sort of noticeable feel when you go through those but I mean that I've been in I've been riding through town <laughs> oh front brakes are also good I've been riding through town and even the aim it's what I think is one of those bikes really you, you just put it in the a really and you, and you live with it you know wow look at that up there 
look at the views look at that that is that's incredible that is incredible what a road this is i want to stop and take some pictures wow 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 that's amazing there they are i could see them look going up going up there bloody hooligans you mean you don't want to get it wrong here <laughs> you don't want to get it wrong here I mean, bikes like the MT-07, you know, they, they, you wouldn't be able to take them and thrash them around and chuck it around like you can on, like I'm doing on this. The suspension feels, you know, this is still, you know, it's an eight grand bike, it's still, you know, a, a budget middleweight, you know, but it, it's definitely got some premium feel to it, you know, it, that suspension's decent, it may be non-adjustable, but it's set up nicely. you've got the confidence to throw it around and it, it goes side to side nicely the engine's torquey wow 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 oh, these roads are fantastic around here absolutely Incredible, here they are. Woof, that was good. What, what incredible views, wow. On the power, it's quite bumpy as well, giving the suspension a real good test out here. And yeah, there's no, even with me on it, 20 stone, I say again, or 19 and a half now, because I've been on a bit of a health kick. Well, I was over twice, you say I was 20 stone, but I was, I was 21 stone at one point. But even with me on it, you know, not not your average size rider by any means you know i still i'm still the suspension is still coping you know it's not wallowing out it's not bottoming out that's tightening up grip the tank down on the blipper Ugh, wet patches <laughs> on the power more wet patches yeah it's impressive it's certainly got the fun factor you know and, and that, the presentation last night from the japanese they said it was all about building fun you know building fun into this motorcycle and it, there's not even huge amounts of sort of weight transfer as i'm on and off the brakes as well You know, and, and I'm breaking, I'm having to brake very sharply here. These aren't particularly flowing roads, they're bumpy. <laughs> oh, this is good. This is good. This is what we wanted. Enjoy that, Mussy. Uh, not bad, I'm a bit, uh, I think the Bacardi's still... <laughs> Coursing through your system. Well, it's a nice gentle little cruise up, wasn't it? I think we're going to be doing a few photos and stuff now. We've just had a, a crazy trip up through the mountains. I mean, this, this route so far is beautiful, absolutely stunning. I and mean, we've just come through some amazing, uh, like, rock formations and tunnels through the rocks up here. I'll put the camera on when we do the, I'm going to do the photos back and forth a little bit now, a little bit of guffage with photos, but um, yeah, it's absolutely stunning. So this is Route Napoleon, what I'll do, it's so stunning, I'll find out what the road names are and I'll, and I'll put them in the description of the video so you can sort of follow this route, but I mean, it is sensational. Ooh, I know, hmm, second breakfast we have ice it's not massively warm up here bit of ice there let's see gotta be a little bit careful someone has crashed already that is the new dash and the mode button will just take you through traction suzuki yeah suzuki, suzuki dms suzuki dynamic something or other that's the uh, throttle position mode anyway but, yeah, but there's no menu to go in it's quite a you know a simple simple layout but a classy layout i like it double press to turn the tc off 
really controlled traction control you know it's all built into the same same systems i don't think this has got an imu so it'll be a you know relatively rudimentary uh traction control i'd imagine when we turn it on again i guess the traction control come back on no it stays off that's fantastic wow i'm really impressed with that tc stayed off we switch the bike on and off traction control stays off wow someone's done it a manufacturer has actually done that on the middleweight bike just try that again i can't believe that traction off fantastic oh range till empty you've got a range till empty that's really nice you don't get that on the hornet there's some incredible views on this bit of road i mean look at that i think they've got the video guys here let's see if we can spice up this corner a little bit for the video oh yeah you don't want to go down there though but look at this absolutely amazing <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. here we go in the tunnel I mean look at the view I mean look at this bit of road god that makes you feel Ooh, look down there then you go down there and you're dead so it's got to be treated with respect the low wall there that you hit that you're straight over that and you are dead unbelievably they've actually shut the road <laughs> they've shut the road <laughs> just some suzuki guys in high-vis jackets and they've, they've shut the road <laughs> through the arch cold bit leave it up right over the cold bit this should be all right where we've had a bit of sun on it I don't look down there <laughs> Get it in, let's get it singing, let's get it singing. It does flop in and change direction really nicely actually. I mean, it's 200 kilos but it feels yeah, just a little bit dulled compared to the Hornet but pretty much, you know, if you weren't comparing them you'd be completely happy and it's certainly got a good bit of you know, agility and suspension feel. But yeah, it's very nice actually. That is the photos and video tracking all done. It's now about bloody quarter to one, 10 to one. Now I think we've got a half hour ride to the lunch stop. So, hmm, I think it could be a bit fruity <laughs> getting this bit of riding. So, uh, a bit more t handling, testing. Been chatting to a few other people. We got, you know, everyone seems to be absolutely loving it. You know, obviously the big, the big competition with this bike is, is of course, you know, the Hornet. I mean, everyone's comparing it to the Hornet. Obviously, MT07 is getting on a bit now. You know, it's. Um, yeah, it's not a new bike, so it's a bit unfair to compare it to the MT-07, which is an older design. Obviously, it's been refreshed, you know, in that time. But this is obviously a new bike, whole new bike ground up. And the thing about this is, you know, it doesn't feel... The, the, the Hornet's brilliant, great bike, £7,000, fantastic. And it is more, I'd say it's a bit more fun than this, the Hornet, as well. The Hornet is a little bit more lively. I mean, the Hornet will lift the wheel up in first and second. You know, this this isn't so e eager to, to lift the front. Um, this does feel a little bit more growing up though. You know, this is a bike, I could actually consider having one of these. Being a bigger guy, it's nice to be on a bike which is you now actually a reasonable size, not too small. This middleweight market is just full of bikes which are tiny, you know, to, to achieve that real low weight, you know. This is why this is 202 kilos because it's a more substantial machine, you know. So, uh, which I like being a bigger guy. So if you're a bigger guy and you're looking for a middleweight, this is definitely, I would say, the one to have. And it doesn't feel like a, a budget machine. <laughs> you wouldn't dream of pushing like, an MT-07 like this, you know. 
it, it does feel like it's got decent suspension, decent, you know, I think this is the chassis more than anything. I think the chassis is really, really good here. <laughs> and that's what all of the, you know, all the Jordanos have been saying. You know, the chassis is what's making this bike, this new chassis. That's a bit tight, isn't it? Woo! Yeah, this is a uh, fairly decent pace here. You know, you can move around on the seat, you've got a decent bit of grip from the tank as well. But it's that mid-range is where the power is. And like I say, it does tail off a little bit as the revs increase. That's the pegs down with my weight on them. Oh, but look at this man, this is just unbelievable. Yee-haw! It amazes me when you come to somewhere like this, you know, where is everybody? Where is everybody? It's just unbelievable when you get out on the, you've got twisty roads like this with nobody on them. You, you just, this is why riding in Europe is so amazing. You just don't get this in the UK, you know, it's, it's absolutely incredible. But there's amazing Spanish roads the other week, and these amazing French roads. Incredible. Sometimes when you hit like a severe sort of pothole, you get a little bit of jarring for the suspension. It's, it's definitely a sporty ride. It's been set up to be sporty, this. You know, whether that will be too sporty, you know, on the UK potholed roads, I don't know. We'll have to see when we get one for a sort of a, more of a long-term test in the UK, but on these beautiful Alpine, can we call these Alpine? Are we near the Alps? I think so. Alpine roads, oh, it's phenomenal. There's plenty of support. Even for 20 stone fatty, I just like a little bit more preload in the rear. I think it's quite hard to get to the preload adjuster on the shop there. Over lunch, I might see if one of the Japanese techs can uh, preload me up. Let's see if we can turn off the traction control. TC off. Let's see if we can get some naughty wheelies in. The horn it would clutch up nicely in second, you know, with me on it. The other guys are getting it up. <laughs> I haven't got it up yet. Could be an age thing. I may need the little blue pill which matches the colour of this bike if I want to get it up. <laughs> Just like a bloody track day. Drive, 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 loads of drive. Out of corners. So it's almost like one of those bikes you leave in a higher gear and you're a bit like the uh, R1250 RS I was riding the other week, you know, leave it a higher gear and use the torque rather than revving it out. It's definitely a torquey, a really torquey motor on this. This is a proper little weapon, this. Proper little weapon. This is fun. This is a lot of fun. Really good brakes as well. As I say, lacking a little bit of initial bite, perhaps. But you know, once you're on them, absolutely fine. I mean, I wouldn't be pushing like this if the brakes weren't decent, you know? Didn't have confidence in them. Dodge, Dodge Central. A little bit bouncy when you're really nailing it around there. Jesus, this is this is incredible. An incredible ride. <laughs> Riding the pants off of this. 
and this must be lunch. I don't know where we are. This is very pretty. And it's lunchtime. Ah, oh, gentle little run, wasn't it? So there we go, nice little bit of lunch in there. And now we're heading back to the hotel. I mean, look at look at the views up there. Little monastery at the top of that. I mean, it's, it's incredible around here. Route Napoleon. Absolutely, this road is fantastic. But the bike, you want to know about the bike, not so much the route, about the bike. I've been really, really impressed with the GSX-8S. I'm finally getting there, learning how to say it. It's, uh, I mean, the biggest competitor for this machine, you know, the new bike for this year is the Hornet. So, you know, you can't really review, I think, this bike, even though I'm going to do a comparison with Greg when we go back to back with these machines. You know, I can't really give you my verdict on this without giving you a little bit of a comparison with the Hornet. And, you know, th this, this is a little bit bigger. I and mean, as I've mentioned, this is a little bit bigger. Feels perhaps a little bit more grown up. Obviously, me being a bigger guy, this is a physically bigger machine. You know, th this would be the one I would probably buy out of the two. With the Hornet, when you jump on it, it does. it is, it is a really fun motorcycle. And it actually, it doesn't look like it's going to be a really fun motorcycle. I mean, it looks a little bit bland, the Hornet, doesn't it? Whereas this, this definitely looks better. I know, of course, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder, isn't it, the looks? But I definitely think this looks like a more fruity machine than the Hornet. You know, what has been impressive with this machine is, you know, it is built to a budget. It is a thousand pound more expensive than the Hornet, let's not forget. Let's not forget that this bike is a thousand pound more expensive than the Hornet. Let's also not forget that this bike is 10 kilos heavier than the Hornet. And it's also almost 10 brake horsepower less than the Hornet. And it's a thousand pound more expensive. Now those are the facts. Those are the facts. But, you know, this is a bigger bike, which I think accounts for the extra weight. You know, it's, um, yeah, it feels like a more accomplished package. The suspension's definitely but we couldn't have ridden the Hornet around here like we've ridden like we've ridden this to be perfectly honest. You know, this has been ridden that ride but I don't know how much I can even show but the ride from the photo shoot to the uh, restaurant was mad. It was a mad ride and you couldn't have ridden the Hornet like we rode these, really pushing it. There's not that much weight transfer, you know, it's um it's impressive. It's an impressive bike despite on paper not quite being as good as the Hornet and don't get me wrong when the, on the Hornet you can clutch it up the wheel naturally comes up in first and second on the Hornet on the power you know this I think this is a little bit longer I think the wheelbase is a little bit longer on this and it feels a little bit less playful but a lot more stable you know so I guess you pay your money and you take your choice but don't dismiss the GSX S because you think it's heavier, it's less power, it's more money. Let's not bother riding one, let's just buy a Hornet. Definitely take it for a spin.